tells me, but it's thin and loosey. And you say, oh, wow, Jane, you're much better on this test than Lucy. And then I'm writing a scale for this group hug, and you see, oh, so the score goes between 0 and 10, and actually both score really highly. So if you set the original to 0, both did really well on this test. So this is one way to see the group hug was. And that's something you notice if you're just in the group as well. So axis alignment, things that um, came up earlier, or just using levels that are not actually supposed to be meaningful is another easy way. And uh, I'm glad that we're complementary in that, just being more clear and empty this time. So things that might reinforce that practice is the ones that I showed my notes uh, of earlier. It might reinforce the, the thinking between this is something, there is something really there that's important, or oh, there's no difference between X and Y. I really like the X more complicated, not regular. And one sense also has the truth. We actually always have uncertainty in our data. And when we want to replicate something, we're just looking into a trial, or at least put pieces of a puzzle together, that we need an idea of the uncertainty of the data, of what the data looks like. So let me run through a quick example. So these are four samples. And they're almost the same if I just plot them like this. I mean, I'm nicely starting with zero, so that's a good improvement. Now I'm adding some measure of uncertainty, error box. This is now sometimes called a binary plot. And I like the avoid error bars, but I have probably different reasons for them. So now if you look at the raw data of the same error bars, they're vastly different. So the underlying distribution is that they was the exact same statistics and error bars. Uh, yeah, not comparable, for example. Here we actually have two different groups. Here we have an outlier, so it's similar to our uh, slope stone test. Here we just have way fewer additional points than in all other data sets. So what did the exact equivalence of these error of these bar plots tell us? Nothing. Just remind you, this is again superimposing where that of the bar. So the suggestion of this story is this just won't help 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 us build it up. And we should just get used to life being messy. So this is the original plot that I have about the very last one. And actually the test suggests that even with the outlier or the unequal number of samples are similar across all these groups. And it's just recommending this paper if you're interested in visualization biology and perhaps. So we noticed that for bar plots do change because bar plots are everywhere in the mathematical science and neuroscience. I really try to find a paper on language acquisition, which is my main focus, uh, that did not use bar plots to visualize distribution that was published in the last five years, and I've failed. I failed miserably. <laughs> and uh, that's really how bad the problem is. And so we tried to um, yeah, do something about that because now there are not as many, especially in Europe. Let me just tell you, thank you for coming and all of that are awesome to study because it's exciting. Um, there's no information that, like, for example, whether the number of samples is equal or that there are two groups on the line. And we just also don't know whether the assumptions to conduct all these statistical tests we used to say this is significant or this is not significant are actually met. And thus we might take the take on the wrong conclusion. Another problem, and that also leads back to the field of IP, is that the surface actually suggests that the height of the bar is meaningful. But for example, if we plot the error rates in plots, higher error rates are not really that bad. Or if you compare surface and height, but they mean very different things. It also su suggests that zero is meaningful or whatever which you choose. But if you, for example, plot point process or anything with a transcript that is not zero, what does the zero, the error between zero and 50 percent actually tell you? Which is two, two things to think about. Yeah, and a random base, and just to emphasize a tiny difference, this is the most difficult to get. So, Bring back that, um, that picture. So, all these things help you in, for example, emphasizing the story of other companies. So, like we really have a load of possible alternatives, so which one should we pick? Um, so, I'm going to just cycle through um, the X dimension, I'm going to go quick. Again, the boards, the binary plots, and 
tracking is a mess up, just go to the box button. Still quite nice, neat visualization where you have the leads and you have the values, the easy outliers, something that Mars can give you. You already see that these data sets are different. It's still a bit more compact than you would like, so you can, for example, in a live polymer or without a photo, to compose your data. These are violent plots, they are basically. They show you where the fault of the data is. That's really nice. And you see that one is really nice and symmetrical, the second is, is a smooth distribution, and then you can still superimpose your data. The point that only works with so much more data. If you have a hundred or a thousand data points, you want to use some solid statistics. So you can do this, for example, with hundred data points in a grid. So yeah, just to, to reiterate some things that we heard before. You want to be clear about your data and your informants here, but you don't want to confuse the, the yeah, your reader, your audience. Uh, well, for example, with COVID, that's what I do. I don't have the solution, I just have a negative message. It might be very important. And for example, yeah, visit NITRO for data um, or trying to overlay that. Thank <laughs> you. 